Oh, you want to sing the Should we sing the, the opening song? Some man just trying to worship. Mike, you ready to do the first song, or you just want some filler music? Okay.
Good morning. We welcome you to our worship service this morning. I know there is some confusion about the masks, so let me explain what we're doing at this point. Uh, we will continue to wear the mask today for sure. Um, and the Congregation Council meets on Thursday. By that time, we'll have more clarification. There, there seems to be some difference of opinion uh, between the CDC and uh, other organizations. So uh, we will know, uh, hopefully, that will be clarified. It's important that we protect ourselves. And so uh, we're, until we're sure, we're going to continue uh, to wear the mask. And we will let you know uh, through email uh, when we will discontinue that. So thank you for cooperating with us. I know there's some confusion there, but um, we just are playing it safe just to make sure. So uh, we thank you for being here today. It's, we have a pretty good group, and so we look forward to our worshiping together. Um, our musicians today, thank you for playing and leading our worship, and Karen will do the announcements. Morning, everyone. Pretty smooth. Soon we can see each other's smiles once again. Uh, the, a message from the call committee. On Thursday, May the 13th, the call committee met via Zoom. They have some applicants and will be starting the interview process in the coming weeks. Uh, we are asking the congregation to please pray. Uh, please keep the call committee, the church, and our future pastor in your prayers. We are very excited to move forward with this process. Committee chairs, please submit your annual report information by Thursday, May 20th. So coming up. Upcoming Congregational Council elections. Nomination forms are in your bulletin, and also there are some in the narthex. The annual congregation meeting is scheduled for June 13th at 10 o'clock in the morning. Graduating seniors from high school or college, contact the office so Linda can get a bio form out to you so that we can uh, have the information in the upcoming bulletin. Drive Up Holy Communion will be held today following worship. Uh, next, Friday, next Sunday, the 23rd, Pastor Fry will meet with the children, the youth, and the parents. Um, you will receive more details this week via email, and Pastor Fry hopes to see you all there for that. Uh, please look in your bulletin for more information for, on these announcements, and there are, of course, some other ones. And Matt, did you want to say something from the nomination? Yes. Call committee. The nomination team is uh, still accepting nominations from the congregation. There'll be forms at the back. I'll stand back here and hand them out. If anybody knows of a, a registered leader that they would like to nominate for our next pastor, um, I'll give you the form, fill it out, give it back to me, and I'll send it into the Senate from there. May I clarify? This is from the call committee, not the nomination committee. Yes, the call committee. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, regarding the nomination committee, we will be having a meeting. I've tried to get the word out to all of you that are part of that team. But uh, this will be Tuesday evening, the 18th at 6 p.m. here at the church. We continue with our worship.
try so hard to find the words to say To let you know how great is this God to whom I pray Nothing can or ever will compare To the peace that flows in your soul When he is living there to contemplate letting go and reaching out and trust but I know the simple truth that love is here for you so take him at his word and see what he can do so love the world that he gave The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for those waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. 
Gracious God and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own. And by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Children, would you come forward, please? It's good to see you today. Let me get my mask back on, okay? If I can find it. Now, children, I have here something that you probably are pretty much aware of. What is this? A Tootsie Roll Pop, right? Tootsie Pop. Okay. Do you have a favorite color? Yellow? Uh, dark blue. Dark blue. Uh, like this. Okay. What's your favorite one? Red? Okay, like this. Okay, and what's your favorite color? Pink. I'm sorry. Pink. pink. I don't think I have any pink. The closest I can get to pink is this one. Okay? So, we have various colors, but they all have one thing in common. And what is it? The chocolate center, right? <laughs> yeah. Every one of them, no, regardless of their color, have a chocolate center in them. Okay, and I think everybody looks forward to getting to that point. I, I get a little anxious sometimes, and I used to bite them ahead of time, and now I've got bad teeth. <laughs> so, okay, so how do you think that that would relate to us as people? We have people of all colors, don't we? We have people from different nations. We have people with different beliefs and religions. So we all, so we, in a way, we're different, like these Tootsie Pops. But we're the same because God is in us, and as human beings, we look the same inside. Uh, we, our blood is red, and so. We have, this, we have bones, and, and we have muscles, and other tissues, so we're similar. And God loves us for that. God loves each and every one of us. But we also are different in a way that we believe, and that we love God, and that we pray to God. So that's a very important thing for us to remember, that regardless of how we look on the outside, on the inside, God is in our heart. Okay? Let us pray. Gracious God, we're so grateful for these children that they, even though they don't look alike, they inside have you in their hearts. And we are grateful for that, just as all of the adults in this congregation do. Help us to feel your love, your power, and your presence, and to share your warmth with one another. In Christ's name we pray. Now, don't eat this before your parents tell you to. Okay, but I'm going to share one with you. Let's see, you said red, didn't you? And you said pink, but that's the closest I can come. You want to pick another color? Ah, okay. All right. Thank you, children. You can go back to your seats. And I imagine they'll want you to wait till after dinner on that. Morning. Morning. First reading comes from Acts 1, verses 15 through 17. 
In those days, Peter stood among the believers together, the crowd numbered around 120 persons, and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerned, or concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in, his, in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called uh, Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's hearts. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take to the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Please read responsibly Psalms 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that the sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its seasons, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. Not so, but are like trees that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The second reading comes from 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 through, 17, or through 13. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know what you have, or that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world, God. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated.
let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. There's a story by Hugh Price titled, The City of Everywhere. Now, in this story, a man arrives in a city one cold morning. As he gets off the train, he sees that the station is like any other station except for one thing. Everyone is barefoot. He notices no one wears shoes. A barefoot cab driver, he said, Pardon me, I was just wondering why you don't wear shoes. Don't you believe in shoes? Sure we do, says the driver. Why don't you wear them, asked the man. Ah, that's the question, the driver replies. Why don't we wear shoes? Why don't we? At the hotel, it is the same. The clerk, the bellboy, and everybody is barefoot. In the coffee shop, he notices a nice-looking gentleman at a table opposite him. He says, I notice you aren't wearing any shoes, and I wonder why. Don't you know about shoes? Then why don't you wear them, asks the stranger. Ah, oh, that's the question, says the man. Why don't we? After breakfast, he walks out on the street in the snow, but every person he sees is barefoot. He asks another man about it and points out how shoes protect the feet from the cold. The man says, we know about shoes. See that building yonder? That is a shoe manufacturing plant. We are proud of that plant. And every week we gather there to hear the man in charge tell about shoes and how wonderful they are. Then why don't you wear shoes, asked the stranger. Ah, that's the question, says the man. Dr. Robert Goodrich told this story in a book called What's It All About? Then he asked, don't we believe in prayer? Don't we know what prayer can mean to our lives? Of course we do. We know about prayer. Then why don't we pray? Ah, that's the question. Why don't we pray? Why don't we? Jesus, the Son of God, prayed a lot. But why? As both God and man, could Jesus not take things into his own hands rather than taking the time to pray about them to his Father in heaven? Well, yes and no. Because Jesus was indeed divine. And no, because having been born into the world in human form, Jesus was subjected to human limitations. He had to eat human food in order to stay alive. He had to sleep in order to maintain his strength. He had to walk in this time rather than transporting himself over great distances, which he could have. And Jesus had to communicate with his heavenly Father through prayer. On this particular occasion, it was a short time before his arrest and his crucifixion. John's Gospel has Jesus praying in front of his disciples rather than his going off by himself to pray. This is significant, considering that he was praying not for himself, but he was praying for his disciples and all believers ever since. Jesus knows that the Holy Spirit will be with them, but his concern for their well-being and for the success of their mission to the world leads him to pray. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them, and now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. So that they may be one as we are one.
Keith Wagner tells the story of a seacoast town in which the residents watched the village blacksmith day after day as he painstakingly wrought every link of a great chain that he was forging. Behind his back, they scoffed at such care being taken on such an ordinary thing as a chain. But the old craftsman worked on, ignoring them as if he had not heard them at all. Eventually, the chain was attached to a great anchor on the deck of an ocean vessel. For months, it was never put to use. But one day, the vessel was disabled by a breakdown in its steering apparatus while nearing the coast in a storm. Only a secure anchorage could prevent the vessel from being driven onto the rocky coast. Thus, the fate of the ship and hundreds of passengers depended on the strength of that chain. Not, no one knew of the care and skill that had been lavished on each link, each link of that chain by an obscure smith. It was only doing his best. The chain held and the ship, its passengers, and its crew were saved. Like the anchor chain in the story, each of us is linked together as God's people to bring strength and reliance to God's church. In the words of Jesus, As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they may be sanctified in truth. Jesus' prayers embody the importance of allowing God into our lives on a personal level. His connection to the Father was strong and unbreakable. He was empowered by that connection to do whatever he was called to do, even to die on the cross for the salvation of the world. In today's text, Jesus also prays for our protection, for his disciples from the world. That may sound a little strange to be called to bring Christ to the world, while at the same time being protected by Christ from the world. But it isn't so strange when we think about it. Amy Allen says, life in the present, of course, is not without struggles, Jesus does not ask God to take his disciples out of the world or even to protect them from those struggles. The scriptures seem to point to a more complicated relationship between God and the world, one in which joy in God may still lead to a struggle in the world. Joy in Christ is happiness for those who remain firm in their faith to be courageous enough to face whatever may come. Just as Jesus prayed to the Father to protect his disciples from harm while they did God's work, we pray for one another that we may persevere in times of peril or hardship so that the gospel message may continue to be joyfully shared. There is no better time to be the church. In the Acts of the Apostles, Peter addressed his audience as friends. They cast lots to select the twelfth disciple to replace Judas. The Spirit was at work as Matthias was chosen. Now, according to Susan Torha, the lot has fallen to you and me. There are always risks as we follow the path we feel that the Spirit is leading. We are called in this time and place to be witnesses to the presence of the grace and hope of the resurrection. There is work to be done in Jesus' name, and we are called to do it. In the prayer of the day, we prayed, Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your Spirit, Transform us and your beloved world that we may find joy in your Son. This world needs to experience the kind of joy to be found in Jesus. I don't see much joy these days in people. 
So to have our joy complete, we would do well to follow Christ's example of praying to the Father in heaven for guidance, encouragement, and patience as we do God's work. Prayer is powerful and important to the community of believers. We teach our children to say the blessing before meals and their bedtime prayers at night. What about other times of the day or night when the presence of God is important? I had uh, one daughter, as she was learning to pray the blessing at the meal, said, God is good, God is great. Let us thank him for our plate. As adults, how often do we pray during the day or evening? Do we pray just at special times or meals or bedtime only? Or do we pray like Jesus as an earnest conversation for God's presence in all aspects of our lives throughout the day? Do we pray regularly for one another? God hears our prayers, and in his way and time, he responds in a way that builds up the body of Christ and the Christian community. May the power and love of God strengthen us through prayer as we seek to do God's will. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time to make our common prayer to you. And you have promised through your Son that where two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill, O Lord, our desires and petitions as we may best be for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. You may remain seated for this hymn.
alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus, the joy of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word and unify us as Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy mercy is great. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying your creative impulse. Seize team with life. Forests reach up to praise you, and the mystery of life lies deep in the soil. Guard and keep this world for the well-being of all your creatures. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Sovereign, those who follow your ways are like trees planted near streams of water. Establish the leaders of nations and all in authority in your grace and truth. Strengthen them so that the people they serve will have abundant life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy mercy is great. great. Generous Savior, you befriend those who are sick, suffering, poor, lonely, outcast, rejected. Grant healing and love to all in need. Today we are especially praying for Tom Kennedy. We pray for John and Brenda Thompson, Bob Chertok, We pray for Janine Woody and Peggy Faggart Morgan. We pray for Sylvia Faggart, Dick Tolbert, Dan Gleason, Lisa McKinnon. We pray for Paul Hurley, Pat Reetford, Jan Almondinger, Kathy, Patty Stuver, Bonnie Walsh. We pray for Virginia Motley, JC, Gina, JJ Brava, Amanda, Junior Barringer. And we pray for all those that we now name in our hearts and on our lips. Give them tangible signs of your steadfast love. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. Creator God, here in this community, we share the gift of praying, learning, and supporting one another. Give us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts that are unique to us and keep us from being envious of others with different gifts. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. Saving God, your wonderful promise is the gift of eternal life in Jesus. Through the witness of those who have died in you, strengthen us now in the gift of life. We cherish the memory of your saints. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. In the hope of new life in Christ, We raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sins, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in the remembrance of me. Gathered by the Holy Spirit together, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table of the Lord to receive his holy and precious gifts. You may be seated. We'll ask you to come up um, in two lines and go back to your seat by the side aisle. As you leave this morning, use the side aisle so you can place the containers uh, in the what is provided for you. I will be... Uh, giving Holy Communion to uh, people who are at home, uh, drive by immediately after the service.
the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood, uh, please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and dark. at his voice trembles at his voice how great Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead, three in one. Father, Spirit, Son, a lion and the lamb, lion.
sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God how great And oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.